Hello and welcome to the special Magic 8 Ball tutorial in Visual Basic. Now in this tutorial we're going to make something a bit like a Magic 8 Ball. And obviously we all know that Magic 8 Balls are actually just down to chance. There's no such thing as superstition. Well, that's what I believe anyway. Everyone's entitled to their own opinions. So, let's get started. What we want to do is create something that, when you ask it a question, it gives you an answer. And that answer is going to be randomly generated. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover random numbers. And don't worry if, well, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you might not have watched the other one, uh, which we didn't actually cover random numbers in that tutorial. But I'll go over this again in the future anyway. So don't worry too much about the random number part, as that will be covered in more detail in the future. So, first things first, we want to create the program loop. And to do this, we type do loop. Now, we want the user to be able to actually exit the program. And we're going to want to have to do that by a user input. But we can't do that just yet, because we haven't actually got a menu or any way that the user can tell the program that they, they, they want to uh, end the program. So first of all, let's start by actually writing the menu out. So, console.writes line. Now, let's give it a title first. So, let's call it the magic 8 ball. Um, yeah, I'll take those two words. There we go. And then we want to give them the options. So, option number one would be to spin the ball, and option number two would be to quit the program. Console.writes line one, and that will be spin. And console dot right line two, and that will be quit. Now I did a very similar thing with the quit clause in the other video. So if you are watching this and you have watched the other video already, just bear with me on this because it's quite an important thing to get across. Now we need to do a console read line here in order to get the user's um, option of what they want the, what they want to do. So let's create a variable called menu in menu as string and that's going to hold the option that the user chooses and you saw in the previous tutorial how to give a value to a variable and we're going to do that now we're going to write menu equals console dot read line okay so the menu variable gets the number one or two and we want to loop until menu equals 2. And what that basically means is that the program will keep running and it will keep repeating this menu screen and it will keep um, doing the code between the do loop parts until the user enters the number 2 into the menu variable. And that's quite important because we don't want the program just stopping at random times and we also want the user to have the ability to quit when they want to. Okay, so now let's move on. In fact, I'll give a quick demo of this first. And bear with me. There we go. So we stick the number one in. It'll just repeat because it doesn't actually do anything once it's got the variable, uh, the user input, sorry. It just repeats. And if we press number two, it quits. So we've sorted out the number two option, the quit option. And that's what we usually do when we create our program loop. We give the uh, options quit first. And now what we want to do is actually get on to the main meat of the program, and that is the spin option. So, let's put an if statement in. If the menu variable equals 1, then... So if menu gets the value 1, then we actually want to do the part where um, the magic 8 ball actually asks for the question. So... To begin with, I'll do a console.clear. Now, you may have not seen this before. If you watched the other video, you will have done. But a console clear basically clears all of the writing in the console. It will remove anything that's in there, and it just prevents it from getting messy, because if it just all builds up on top of each other, then it does look a bit confusing, and yeah. So, clear the console. And now what we want to do is actually generate a random number. And to do that, we need two variables dim random as new random and dim and I'm going to call it rand you can call it anything you like but rand as integer 
and this variable rand is going to take the random number that this generates. And to generate a random number, first of all you write randomize. This isn't necessary, but it's a good practice to write randomize, as it makes a truly random number. And then we write men, uh, sorry, rand equals random.next, and then we write the boundaries, so 1 to 100. And that can create any number between and including 1 and 100. And then random, uh, sorry, rand, the variable rand, will take that random number as its value. Now we're going to do another if here, and again, we're doing a nested if here, because it's an if within an if, and don't worry about that just yet, just go with what I'm doing, and I'll explain about nested ifs and nested statements in another video in the future. But we are using techniques that you've already learned, and nothing should really be new here apart from the random section. So if rand is less than 50, then... So if this random number is less than 50, let's give a true value. So we're going to answer questions that are yes and no questions. So console.writesVine, yes. Else, console.writesVine, no. So what's happening here is that it's generating the random number, and if it's less than 50, the answer will be yes. And if it's greater than 50, the answer will be no. So then we want to do a quick console read line to create a pause. And then we'll give a quick demo. And there is something else we need to add in, but I'll just show you this for now. Here we go. So let's spin. And it's given the value no straight away. And that's not bad, because that's basically what we've told it to do. It's, ra it's created a random number, and it's given a yes or no answer. Now we need to add a little bit of flesh here. So let's just say, console.writesLine, please enter your question. Now in truth, it doesn't actually matter what the question is, because what's going to happen is, the user will ent um, enter their question, and... Because we're re generating a random number to do find the question answer, the actual question itself is irrelevant. So we don't actually have to store the question that the user asks into the program. And now we can demo. Spin. Is the sky blue? Hit enter. And the answer is yes. Of course, there could have equally been uh, the answer of no. So let's ask that again. Is the sky blue? Yes. Okay, so it's just said yes again. I'll keep going until it says, is the sky blue? No. There we go. So it's just really a random, it's like tossing a coin, yes or no, 50-50 chance of either coming up. And one little final thing that I'm going to do, as you see here, it does actually stack the menu back on, well, underneath the uh, program that we, the section of the program that we ran before. So we're just going to stick a console clear up here. Console.clear. And that way, uh, is YouTube great? Yes, it is. <laughs> Hit enter, and it will clear it all, and we're done. So that was the Magic 8 Ball program that uh, I, I came up with. It's quite short, and... It does have a new element of the random in it, but don't worry about that. We're really just focusing on the things you've learnt already, such as the loop, the if statement, and the operators uh, writing from, uh, sorry, reading from the screen and writing to the screen. So anyway, I hope that's been useful to you. I hope you've kind of enjoyed it. It's quite a fun program uh, to do. You can expand on this, uh, but. I will give you more information on the random and the random function in another tutorial. And so, yep, yeah, that's that. And the next tutorial is probably going to be on... Hmm, what is it going to be on? Not actually decided yet. I will let you know when I upload that. So, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video. And I'll see you next time.